This is Brian at Atlanta Hot Tub Center, and today on Tub Talk 101 by popular demand, we are going to talk about chlorine versus bromine. I've had a lot of people ask me, hey Brian, what is your take on chlorine versus bromine? Which do you think I should use? What do you think is best for me? Um, you know, really I can't make that decision for you. So today I'm going to talk about the main points. I mean, we could go on about chlorine and bromine and chemicals for hours, but let's not do that. Let's get right to it. Let's get to the main points. I think it's important to first talk about what each of uh, the chemicals do in the water. How does it actually kill? How does it actually destroy um, the bacteria in the water and how it actually works. So let's start off with chlorine. You know, chlorine oxidizes contaminants. I mean, it invades and destroys bacteria. And after that process is done, you're left with something called chloramines. And chloramines can um, make the water cloudy. It can make it hard to balance the chemicals. So it's very important that we use shock to clean up the chloramines. Uh, in the water. And bromine, what bromine does is it forces apart the chemical bonds, killing bacteria, right? So uh, the trick to this is, is it gives off a waste as well uh, called uh, bromamines, and then you will shock as well. You're going to shock as well because again, bromamines can, can make water uh, cloudy and can make it hard to uh, maintain. So that's what these two things are doing in the actual water and that's what you're seeing. That's the after effect after using a chlorine and bromine is you end up with chloramines and bromamines and that's a lot of the reason why we shock is to um, clear all that up, clean all that up. Okay so let's talk about stability. Um, you know chlorine dissipates much quicker, much faster and so that's why you got to add chlorine a lot more often to the actual um, water to maintain chlorine levels and keep that water clean and clear. You know, bromine, um, you know, kills bacteria over a long period of time. So in, in other words, bacteria will stay, not bacteria, excuse me, not bacteria. Uh, bromine will stay in water longer, okay, when it kills bacteria. So it's going to stay in there longer. Remember, both chlorine and bromine must attach to something before it is active, right? Uh, before it's doing so, it's what's attached to the bacteria, and then of course, and then and then of course, kill it, and then of course, you end up with chloramines or um, bromamines um, after that. So that's the stability, right? Again, chlorine. If you want to maintain chlorine levels, you're gonna have to continue to add chlorine throughout the week. You're gonna add more chlorine to water than you are to bromine. Is basically what I'm saying. So um, now let's talk about. Uh, your body, right? What these two chemicals do to your actual body when you use them. So um, yes, guys, chlorine isn't good for you. It's not good to breathe in. It's not good for your skin. It's not good for your hair. It's not really good for your body. Um, no sanitizer, quite frankly, is. Um, but um, with chlorine, again, um, we all know that it isn't good to breathe it in, not good for your skin, your hair, your body, and all that stuff. But I would say a lot of this is going to depend on what system you're using and water conditioner and so forth. And we're going to get into that at the end. Um, not going to jump into that right now. Uh, bromine is a little bit softer on your skin, right? It's not as bad for you. But again, it still isn't good for you. It is harder to wash off than chlorine is though. I mean, chlorine, you jump in the shower, wash your hair, wash your body, all that chlorine's really gone. Bromine, you really gotta scrub. It's much harder to get it out of your hair and get it off of your skin. Um, bromine really, really sits on your, your, your skin. So you really need to scrub to get that bromine off your skin when you get out of the hot tub. Now, here's the thing, guys. You never wanna mix chlorine and bromine, okay? Mixing the two will give off a lethal gas. Okay, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I was adding chlorine, now I'm using bromine, I by mistake bought bromine. No, you don't wanna do that. You do not want to mix the two folks. That is not good. That chemical reaction is not a good thing between those two chemicals. So I wanna talk about systems. This is very important because this is a lot of how you're gonna make your decision. Um, I'm gonna, uh, a couple of examples. Clear ray systems, ozone systems. Well, with a clear ray system, we're scrambling the DNA in the bacteria, and that bacteria can't mutate. That means I'm going to need a lot less chemicals to really maintain and take care of it. So if I'm only adding a tablespoon of chlorine to my hot tub a week to really maintain it, take care of it, guys, that's really, that's, that's nothing, right? So in that case, maybe I do like chlorine more right? Um, on a flip side, if you're using an ozone system, hey, 
Bromine might be better. But again, you've got to look at these different systems. You have to have the hot tub salesman or the dealership go over what systems in their hot tub, and then they can go over what they suggest so that you can make the right decision for you and your family. There's also water conditioners, right? Everybody knows I love Silk Balance. Silk Balance um, creates soft, silky, smooth water, good for your skin, hair, and body. Soft water is better for your hot tub, better for your skin, all that good stuff. It actually moisturizes the skin. Uh, being that you have that soft water and you have the buffers in there and Silk Balance, again, we can keep chemical levels even lower, right? So remember, there are systems out there to really help you make this decision as well, to be, to be quite frank. So this is Brian at Atlanta Hot Tub Center and the difference between chlorine and bromine. Thank you.